is up. Uh -oh. There it is. It's the first. Woohoo! Come on. You kidding? Yeah. <gasps> oh, happy days. What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Be sure to smash that subscribe button to stay up to date with the latest content. I thought I'd bring you something a little different in this video and talk about my top five tips on getting a first class degree from university. I'm not gonna deny that it takes a lot of hard work or say that I have the perfect structure for achieving the best grades, but these five tips should take you a long way towards achieving your goals. Changing my approach to essay writing helped me to jump from a low two one in second year to a very strong first in finals. Now that I've cleared that mess in the background, Let's get rolling. Right, tip number one, work smarter, not harder. Often when you'll set essays or assignments, you will be given mammoth side reading lists. Indeed, you are likely to be set hundreds of pages to read each week. Ain't nobody got time for that. Cannot stress this enough, but nobody is expecting you to do all of these readings. You need to be strategic in your studying and use your time wisely. You can get all you need to know from any academic paper just by reading the abstract, introduction and conclusion. In an exam or even in a piece of coursework, you'll never need to write more than just one or two sentences on a single reading. So it makes absolutely no sense to read all 100 pages of it. The abstract introduction and conclusion will give you all of the most important information that you need to know and will be much more memorable when it comes to revising. It will also mean that you can dig into all of the readings and have a more comprehensive understanding of the topic incorporating the ideas of different academics. So I personally have a template which I copy and paste the readings onto and format them nicely. I feel like this makes it a lot easier to digest the information and having a structure really helps you to go through it in a systematic way. So I then print them off because I always prefer to read hard copies of, of the readings. So this shortcut will save you countless hours and will ensure you still have time to be going down the club and having your VKs, uh, obviously post COVID. Tip two, plan, plan, plan. This is everything. Maybe it was because I'd done a city planning paper last year, but I cannot emphasize enough the importance of planning in a piece of work before you begin. This is especially true when you have a bit more time. So for instance, in coursework or a 24 hour exam, where you can make a proper thorough plan. In an exam, the plan would be brief, but I would still definitely recommend it. Just trust me on this one. I used to be the biggest skeptic about making a plan. I would always just jump straight into it and get lost or confused or just end up waffling halfway through my essay. It was only in third year when I started properly planning out my supervision essays and the results were unbelievable. In terms of writing an essay, I would jot down my initial thoughts to the question, read the abstract, intro and conclusion, and then decide my core argument and put them as the title for each paragraph. It is also important to maintain a balanced argument. So have some points for and against whatever the question is. I will then put quotes and notes from each of the readings into the subheadings and that will be colour coordinated of course. Once you have your plan, the essay is no longer waffle but instead a piece of cake. Now, In all seriousness, it is incredibly easy to write when you have a detailed plan. The biggest benefit of making a plan beforehand is that your essay will be coherent. It will make sense. There will be a proper structure to it uh, which will be outlined in your introduction which leads us nicely onto tip three. Tip three, smash your introduction and conclusion. A solid structure in your essay is absolutely crucial if you want to achieve top marks. Very often, rightly or wrongly, your entire essay is judged off just your introduction and conclusion. It is the first and last impression that you are leaving the examiner. So you want to get this right, or else you're starting on the back foot. Perhaps I'll make a video in the future about essay writing, but for now, I want to briefly summarize exactly what should go in the introduction. First, to find any key concepts that are in the question. This not only shows that you know exactly what you're talking about, but enables the reader to understand precisely what you mean when you use these terms in your essays. It removes any ambiguity. I wouldn't recommend defining more than two key terms though. Next, you wanna get down all of your key points, which is incredibly easy to do once you've planned your essay out and have all of these to hand. Finally, you wanna put in your thesis, which is your core or overarching argument for the essay. It really is as simple as that to write a startling introduction. Following these steps will be enough to significantly boost your marks. Of course, the conclusion just summarizes everything that's been written in the essay without introducing anything new. So as the old saying goes, writing an essay is as simple as telling the reader what you're gonna say, then saying what you want to say, then tell them what you've told them. Stick to that and you'll have a great essay. Tip four, be original. So this is the part of essay writing that people always think is the hardest, when in reality, it's the easiest thing to do. I'm not saying that you need to come up with complex comparisons of the readings or discover something new in the subject. All I'm saying is that your work needs to provide something different. Examiners have to read through countless essays 
What they don't want to be doing is reading exactly the same thing over and over again. Even if you knew every single thing on a certain topic, had done all of the readings, if your essay is lacking in originality, you will never get more than a 2-1. Being descriptive and talking about the theory can only get you so far. It is absolutely crucial to be analytical to achieve the highest marks. In fact, you should aim for around one third of your essay being analytical. What does being analytical mean? Well, this is a good question and it took me a couple years to get to grips with. The way I see it is that you should always look to include something in your essay that you know for a fact nobody else will be talking about. Now this may be a difficult concept to fathom, so bear with me. You can have your own ideas. Crazy, I know. This is why being analytical is the easiest part, because these thoughts do not have to come from any academic papers. In fact, I'd actively advise them not coming from academic papers. This is where you can talk about anything relevant, be it a news article, something you've seen on TV, or even something you've seen on your evening stroll. If you've experienced something in life that is relevant and interesting, chuck it in your essay. For instance, in summer, when I was revising for my exams, I would go on short runs to get out of the house. And on these short 5K runs, I saw things that would not stand out to anyone ordinary, but to me, they were invaluable in my studies. I saw a proposed block of flats, a rather rundown canal route, and a huge construction site. I'm sure this means absolutely nothing to you, but I incorporated each and every one of them into my planning exam. I brought in the proposed Kensington flats in an essay on the presumption in favour of development, arguing that it could lead to the high-rise slums in the future. With a little research, I found out about the regeneration project taking place on the canal route and how this was paid for by SIL. Finally, the construction site was actually Old Oak Common, which is to be the largest hub station in the UK by 2026. And I use this in my essay about improving transport links. So none of these examples involved any heavy reading or thorough understanding of the course, but they serve to add originality to my essay because I knew for a fact that nobody else was speaking about them. So be creative and draw inspiration from everything around you. For instance, for my farming paper, I actually ended up listening to the BBC Farming Today podcast. And shamefully, it was my... Uh, most listened to podcast of 2020. The less said about that, the better. But nonetheless, it actually provided some contemporary stories about what was going on in the farming world. And I knew this was very original and that nobody else would be talking about it. Who the hell else is gonna be listening to a podcast about goat's milk? Tip five, organization. This last tip is nothing to do with essay writing, but it's more about the importance of organization to be a successful university student. You're in control of your own time and it's always better to get things done early. For instance, I'll do most of my essays in the first two or three weeks of term. For sure, this approach isn't for everyone, but it really helped me to get ahead of the game. It allowed me to write my dissertation over the Christmas break and also enabled me to start with revision for my finals as early as February. So be organized, you reap what you sow. Right, that wraps it all up. Those were my top five tips for getting a first at university. I hope this video has been somewhat helpful. Um, if it has, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out my Instagram page, at Hayes Writes. I'll see you all there.